I was uh, once invited to be part of a group called Kingdom Wealth Think Tank. That's a mouthful. It was basically a group based of uh, mostly Americans who are significant ministers and specialists in the area of kingdom economics. And uh, many of them quite wealthy, quite influential. I was the only non, non-American non in the group. So we talked once a month for two hours on the phone, group called before Zoom, before Skype, about kingdom finances, essentially. But for me, this was pretty boring because everybody was, talk- was just talking about their projects, their what they're doing. And I felt it had very little to do with kingdom. Everybody was just only promoting his ego, my ministry, my group, my vision, my, my, my. So at one point, I gave all of them a homework. And the homework was quite simple. How did Jesus spend money? How in the New Testament did the early followers of Christ actually dealt with God's money? I call it God's money, God's way, the kingdom budget. So I asked everybody, can you, after one month, prepare a sheet, um, a one-pager that explains how in the New Testament money was being used by the early followers of Christ? And if there is any priority in the kind of kingdom expense sheet, like this is the most important, this is the second, this is the third important um, budget item, please say so, with a biblical reference to it. And after one month, um, I received exactly one paper from all those 25 participants, and it was uh, mine. So I thought that is quite odd in the sense that don't people really care about the principles in the New Testament about finances and how to deal with it? Is everybody just doing whatever everybody's doing or because I feel like it? And I thought, I will go to the bottom of this one. And I found out that the number of ways that people are looking at money in the Christian world is based on so many wrong assumptions, one of them being probably the most screaming one, which is many people believe that their money is their money. That is wrong. Because once Jesus buys us at the slave market of sin with his blood, then essentially we're his property and everything that we have and we own, including our money, is now his, including our money, which is actually his money. So we're not supposed to actually take care um, of God's money as if it is our money, but it follows the principles of the kingdom of God, which are called kingdom economics. And... Um, I recall that a lot of people in this regard are having a a true deception also about money. This deception um, is a little bit what Jesus says, that money can be deceptive. He speaks about the deception of money. And one of them is that particularly when you are at 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 a certain level of finances, it seems that you stop having money and the money has you which means the money itself provides the agenda for what to do uh, with this one. And I remember I ran into a story. I will not tell the names, but I'm telling you a story how that hit home for me in a, in a crazy way. I was in a certain country in Asia at a very large conference, and there were quite a number of representatives of foreign foundations there, Christian foundations that were supposed to help the Christian work in that particular country. And... Um, So I met with a lot of people that told me how their foundation is giving money here and giving money there. If there is a need, we will give here. If there is another need, we give there. And I remember that once talking to some of those directors, I said to them, are you aware that Jesus never handled money the way you do it? He never responded to human need. He didn't run around in Palestine responding to human need and says, oh, we we need to build a well here and a hospital there and a kindergarten there. He didn't respond to human need. He responded to God's need. He literally had his head lifted high in the air, into heaven. John 5, 19. I only do what I see my father doing. So he did not respond to need. He was not throwing money at need. He was responding to what was God's need of the hour. That's a huge difference. And some of these directors asked me, are there more principles of how do we deal with God's money? I said, absolutely, of course. And some of them set me down, and I explained some of them, which are actually quite simple. Um, I'm not bringing this up right now, but maybe at a later point. And one guy said, that is amazing. I never heard anything like this, that there are principles of giving kingdom budget, as I call it, in the New Testament. I have to go home to tell our founder of our, of our foundation, um, the, the one who started it, 
about this and then we should invite you you should talk to us about this and it will be amazing it will change everything in a humorous way i said if you do this you know what will happen in my experience people with money that includes most foundations do not want to hear whether there is a god that is actually in charge of his own money and they have to be responsible and accountable to him about that so if you come up with the idea that there is somebody who brings up principles of kingdom economics that we, our foundation, or our group needs to needs to follow, I think you will be fired in 24 hours. I felt it was a joke. But later on, that actually happened. That man literally went home. It was our foundation in America that um, he told about that, and he got fired literally within 24 hours. And I thought that is just an amazing way of our Christian inability to deal with kingdom themes like money. And so I believe we need to come out of this deception of money by being honest to God, sober, looking at what the New Testament actually says about money and start to act like it. Lastly, most Christians are in a way still in the Old Testament when it comes to money. They believe to be rich means to be blessed and God is, is there to help them to be happy, healthy, wealthy, successful. They think of Solomon, they think of Job in a way. They think of um, Abraham, Isaac. So they are very Old Testament focused. The new thing of the New Testament seems to escape them. And in many ways, the New Testament speaks very, very, very different uh, about money. And the early followers of Christ obviously picked up the principles of Jesus, how he dealt with money, and uh, they changed the world. I believe we need to go back there. I believe we need to go back to the original kingdom principles of how money under the direction of God is being spent God's way. God's money for God's ways. And remember, one of the key stepping stones into thinking like that is we need to recognize that our money is not our money. It's God's money. And we are not in charge of it. He is in charge of it. And our opinion about what God wants to do with his money is not all that invited. Welcome to the kingdom. So we need to get that going in our mindset and behave accordingly. I believe it will be an incredible blessing if the people of God would discover yet again the principles of kingdom economics and how to deal with this. It will literally change the world.